Though we almost take it for granted today that D-Day could only have succeeded, some of that success was undoubtedly due to conflicts within the German high command concerning how best to counter any invasion of the continent, divisions that robbed the German army of its tactical flexibility to counter the landings. Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, the famous Desert Fox of Africa Corps fame, was commanding Army Group B in June 1944 that garrisoned the northern French coast. He had wanted to keep strong panzer forces close to the beaches, behind a thin crust of infantry divisions, to immediately counter any Allied beachhead, and to drive the Allies back into the sea. The Commander-in-Chief West, Field Marshal von Rundstedt, was an opponent of Rommel's tactical ideas, and he sided with Hitler. The Führer ordered that the panzer divisions were grouped together well back from the coast so that they could deliver a knockout blow against any point along the West Wall threatened by an Allied landing. Both Hitler and Rommel's plans had their merits, but Hitler's was adopted as Hitler and many generals were concerned with where the Allies would actually land, and whether they could counter it effectively. The fear was that an initial landing could be a feint designed to draw German panzer forces into a trap, whilst the real landing was made somewhere else. The mass panzer divisions therefore would remain stationary until the situation resolved itself and the enemy's true intentions were confirmed. The problem with Hitler's plan was that massive Allied air power prevented the timely deployment of the panzers, stationed 50 or so miles inland to the coast. Railway lines and roads were extensively bombed in the lead up to and during the invasion, making panzer movements very slow and difficult, and Allied fighter bombers bombed and strafed any German vehicles moving around by day. On D-Day itself, on the 6th of June 1944, the Allied landings in Normandy faced only third-rate static infantry divisions that were quickly smashed to pieces. Only on one of the American beaches, Omaha, did the Allies suffer a serious problem, when the US landing coincided with a German anti-invasion exercise causing heavy casualties among the American forces. Hitler then dithered over whether the landings were the real deal or a feint intended to draw his panzer divisions away from the real target, which was perhaps the Pas de Calais in northern France. Only one complete tank unit, the famed 21st Panzer Division, was near the Normandy beaches, stationed north of the town of Caen. It had been in scattered action throughout the early morning as British paratroopers began landing behind Sword Beach on the Orne River. Two of the 21st Panzer Division's Panzergrenadier regiments had been committed to helping the 716th Infantry Division deal with this problem. Later that fateful morning, the entire 21st Panzers was ordered to move away from the coast to eliminate the British paratroopers, even as troops were coming ashore on Sword Beach. However, at 10.30am its orders were abruptly changed. The 21st Panzer Division was told to turn around and strike the British and Canadian landing beaches. The 21st Panzer Division had 124 Panzer IV medium tanks, and an assortment of assault guns and half-tracks. Some of the Panzer Grenadiers could not disengage from fighting British paratroopers, so three Kampfgruppen or battle groups were formed. One would continue to try to pin down the British paratroopers, and the other two was to strike the coastal landings. About two-thirds of the division was available to make the attack onto the beaches. The main strike force was Kampfgruppe Oppeln, named for its commanding officer, Colonel von Oppeln Bronikowski. He had two panzer battalions, one panzer grenadier battalion, and one engineer and one armoured artillery battalion. The second group, Kampfgruppe Rauch, had two Panzergrenadier battalions and some armoured engineers and artillery. As the Kampfgruppen slowly moved into position to attack, they were assaulted by rocket-firing Typhoon aircraft, losing six tanks. At 4pm, Kampfgruppe Oppeln deployed the village of Lebusi, north of Caen. Oppeln was told in no uncertain terms, if you don't succeed in throwing the British into the sea, we will have lost the war. At 4.20, Kampfgruppe Oppeln attacked straight into an ambush laid by elements, the British army, that had already moved off the beaches. 
Anti-tank guns of the British 27th Armoured Brigade's Staffordshire Yeomanry and the Royal Artillery were dug in only four miles from the coast. There were also three troops of Sherman Firefly tanks, which were upgraded with the higher-velocity 17-pounder gun to deal with the big German tanks. The tanks and anti-tank guns were protecting Sword Beach, where there was some confusion as fresh units were coming ashore and there were roadblocks and damaged vehicles and traffic jams. Kampfgruppe Orpeln advanced in two echelons with about 40 Panzer IV tanks. Six Panzer IVs on the right were knocked out, stopping the German advance. On the left, the 1st Panzer Regiment lost nine tanks. So within the space of just a few minutes, Kampfgruppe Orpeln had lost 16 tanks and pulled back into the trees to defensive positions. But Kampfgruppe Rauch had more luck. They found a gap in the line between where the British forces from Sword Beach abutted the Canadian landings at Juneau Beach, a gap of eight miles. Kampfgruppe Rauch, facing almost no opposition, reached the coast, linking up with a trapped German infantry unit, the 111th Battalion Infantry Regiment 736, still holding positions overlooking the beach at the town of lyon zermer Kampfgruppe Rauch needed immediate reinforcement, particularly some panzers, before they could turn and attack the flank of the Allied landing and roll up the Allied beachhead in their sector, attacking either the British 3rd Infantry Division or the Canadian 3rd Infantry Division. The 21st Panzer Division's sudden attack towards the beaches had unnerved the British, who had temporarily halted their own advance on Caen. Kampfgruppe Rauch occupied positions at the coast for the rest of the day, expecting relief to arrive at any time to press their attack, but the rest of the 21st Panzer remained stalled by the strong British anti-tank and tank defences. Then at 9pm, the men of Kampfgruppe Rauch watched waves of British Dakotas towing gliders passing overhead. These were reinforcements for the airborne landings east of the Orne River, but Lieutenant Colonel Rauch thought that his Kampfgruppe would be cut off if these forces landed in his rear. That night, both 21st Panzer Division battle groups were ordered to pull back to the north of Caen. Of course, even if Kampfgruppe Rauch had been reinforced with tanks, one battle group would have been assaulted by naval gunfire support, airstrikes and British tanks and anti-tank guns. But you can also imagine if Rauch's success had been multiplied several times over, if Rommel's plan to keep the Panzer divisions near the coast had been enacted. Multiple armoured battle groups cutting between the landing beaches could have enabled the Germans to roll up several landing points, and D-Day may have failed, partially or completely. Not for the last time, Hitler's meddling assisted the Allies to victory. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.